My name is Erica Miller. I'm an assistant professor in the systems engineering department at Colorado State University. Uh, and my research area is in human factors with an emphasis on uh, calibrating appropriate trust between humans and systems uh, and looking at technology adoption from an equitable lens. And I predominantly apply that to the transportation domain. My name is Marie Vans, and I'm an associate professor in the systems engineering department at Colorado State University. And I do research with, with, in the use of augmented and virtual reality for education and training. Well, I can see the use of our augmented and virtual reality as a platform for education. So instead of, instead of going to an actual classroom, the classroom is a virtual environment and people are learning in those environments without um, having to have a physical space. Yeah, and kind of building on AR and VR applications, I see a lot of that in my research as well. Um, with data analytics, there's so much data out there, and so we really want to inform the, the users, uh, and a good way to help visualize that data and explore it could be through AR and VR as well. Um, I also do research in safety, and it's a little unsafe to put participants in a scenario uh, in a real-world environment, uh, so simulation-based AR, VR certainly is uh, an application that I plan on pursuing in the future. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point, so that, so that a, uh, AR and VR is very good for situations in which uh, people are, where it's a dangerous situations, I mean, even situations that are, are not feasible, like being on the moon or in, in space of some kind, um, that we can, we can actually experience what it's like without have to, having to physically go there. Yeah, and it's a much more affordable mechanism for exploring That's those scenarios. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess I see that um, we need to have we need to have a lot more um, we we need to have a lot more experience in using these platforms for um, for students to do you know simulation work to do um, projects before they would go out into the real world to to uh, um, implement the these projects yeah I think the the push of the technology uh, we need to get away from this mindset of replacing humans uh, in a system with technology and automating the system um, to remove the human uh, error potential um, but instead we need to teach people to think about those interactions of humans and systems and how uh, as we shift maybe more technology and automation interactions how um, how the user changes their role and it isn't just completely removed out of the, the space. So really changing that mindset to think of the, the human plus the technology uh, application. Right. I, I, think that's, I think that's really, really important um, because you'll never be able to completely automate vast majority of, of the, the things that we do in, in the world. So and even you know, with AI and all this stuff, it's not going to replace the human brain for sure. Yeah, there's some things that humans are just better at doing than robots. Uh, and at some point in the life cycle of a system, there's still going to be a human, whether it's in the design, the maintenance, the, you know, decommissioning the system. So we have to think of that life cycle analysis of how the humans interact with their new role um, interacting with technology. Well, I personally think that um, it building, so say, for example, a digital twin of some kind of environment um, absolutely must have systems engineering involved because you can't you can't think of everything and um, one of the nice things is you can use these simu simulations these digital sim simulations to determine what you're missing and what 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 needs to be what needs to be included later on in in a real environment yeah and with the internet of things ever expanding and the connectivity of you know people with devices and people across the world being able to you know, real-time collect data, inform their decisions, and just connect um, amongst all the agents in the playing field. You can't take a, an isolated approach. It really has to be that systems perspective. Um, and so we have to find a way to, to take a systems approach to deal with that data and, and make better decisions and really empower our users. Right, collaboration is really important, I think, because systems are so um, diversified that we need, we need to have we need, we, we need to work together to create systems, that diverse systems, systems that, that, that address all the, the is, issues that things like diversity and inclusion and 
yeah, we're not living in a world anywhere where each independent engineer can be in their office uh, with to break those barriers and really come at it uh, together uh, in a unified approach to, to solve these big problems. Big problem. It's a, a great opportunity for, uh, for a systems approach. Mm -hmm.